All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Brakoth Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Bahasham, Rekah Kodesh. Give double honors to our apostles of Great Millstone, who taught us this truth, and salutations to our sincere brothers that goes out on highways and byways teaching this truth, and Shalom to our sincere brothers and sisters supporting this ministry. Shalom, rise Israel, Kwame Asharala. That's why we have to give double honors to our apostles of Great Millstone. Before I came in the truth, I did know a lot of the scriptures. I did not know the scriptures, period. And one of the main key factors that I've learned is the name through our apostles and prophecies. And one of the prophecies, the major prophecy, one of is the mark of the beast right the RFID chip now this video is proof even more proof that the mark of the beast the system is the RFID chip implantable chip so here's the video now, if I told you that on the one show there would be a feature about how great it would be to have a microchip implanted in all of us, you'd probably think you're having a laugh, man, aren't you? But that's exactly what happened on Wednesday night. This is probably the most sinister feature I've ever seen on TV, um, certainly in the past, well, <laughs> for as long as I can remember. So let's have a look, see what you think. Uh, here's Rory looking forward to a truly bionic future uh, for all of us. Looking forward <laughs> to a truly bionic future for all of us. Starts well, doesn't it? These days, people are modifying their bodies in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways. From surgically implanted horns in your head to some very odd changes indeed. Personally, I wouldn't have any of these cosmetic modifications, but there is a host of more useful technology that people are starting to have put under their skin. Oh, isn't that nice? Useful technology that people are having implanted under their skin. Seriously? If you'd, <laughs> if you'd shown this even five years ago, people would be going, what? And I hope people are rightly outraged by this. But it doesn't seem they are because... There's been very little commentary about this on uh, online. I posted some stuff on Twitter after I saw it, but well, carry on watching. It might sound a bit sci-fi, but some companies promise a future where you can open doors, pay for your dinner, or even clear customs using microchips implanted in your hand. Well, that's the plan, isn't it? Why is everything going online and digital? Why is uh, why are we becoming a cashless society? We're paying things with contactless cards or with apps on phones it's to get everything if you get everything digital and online um, it's easily tracked traced and databased it's just it's another way of keeping us all under surveillance and controlled basically and these microchips are the ultimate this is the ultimate goal and we'll see more about that later on here we go Stephen Northam runs the UK's first human microchipping company, and of course, he has one fitted. Our technology is quite simple. It's the same technology used in cats and dogs. All the data stored on the microchip itself only is readable when it's scanned against an external reader. The implant contains a unique identifier code and uses close-range radio communication, so when you swipe your hand against the reader, it knows it's you. So currently, the microchips can be used for opening doors, um, starting cars, so swiping your hand on a steering wheel. You can start a car. a car with it. Start a car, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, it. Yeah, you can open doors with it. Yeah. <laughs> this is all part of the whole 
surveillance by convenience agenda that's going on. You know, um, how many things, you know, it's like smart meters supposedly to uh, help us save money. They don't save us money. I made a video about that as well, which you can see. I'll either post a link here or I'll post a link in the description. But it is surveillance by convenience. You know, it's making technology, you know, easy technology that makes things supposedly easier. But the downside of it is that it's just more of your privacy being taken away. You're being more tracked, traced and databased wherever you go. So everything you do, wherever you go, is being uh, traced, tracked and recorded and stored for future use by who knows who, for who knows what. And that's the dangers, isn't it? Let's carry on. Yeah, logging onto laptops so I can scan my hand and... My laptop logs in. Look at that. And future technology for this is contactless payments, passports, a whole variety of different technologies could be integrated into the chip. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Get everything digital. So if you had a chip implanted, this is the real danger, isn't it? If you had a chip implanted which had all your bank details on it, so you wouldn't need a card, you could just swipe your hand, it'd have your medical records on it, um, you could use it for travelling or, like they say, for getting through customs or uh, passport control, things like that. So, if that is the future, which clearly this is what this is leading to, what happens if um, the government of the day, if you, the, the, you don't like what the government's doing and you protest, and they just turn off your chip? Correct. Well, you can't travel anywhere. That's correct. You can't pay for anything. Um, Full control. And you can't get medical help, medical assistance. So that's the ultimate, isn't it? The ultimate control, basically, isn't it? If you've got everything on a chip, all your details, all your means of payment travel or means of getting medical um, medical care is all on a chip. If that gets turned off, what do you do? Kiri Boya is a convert. Hi, Kerry. Yeah, nice to meet you. She knows Stephen, and when he explained the idea, she joined a waiting list to have a microchip implanted that could allow her to automatically open the doors to her house. I'm a nightmare with house keys to start with, so initially being able to let myself into my own house would be great. Um, I love technology, bit of a tech geek. So going forward, if it's things like chip and pin, paying for things, um, not needing to leave the house with bank cards. So this is all about making your life easier, as far as you're concerned. Yeah. Seriously, how lazy do you have to be that you'd rather have a microchip implanted in your body rather than open a door with a key? <laughs> Again, surveillance by convenience. So it all works. Stephen's chips use special biocompatible glass and are designed to last their lifetime, so should never need to be removed. But getting a microchip for identification is not considered to serve a medical purpose, so they aren't regulated as medical devices. Do you feel different? No. Super. <laughs> <laughs> Each implant costs around £250, and adapting your lock so it opens your doors could cost up to £5,000. Seriously, how lazy? <laughs> I can't be bothered to use a key, so I'll pay, actually pay, to have a uh, microchip implanted in my hand, and pay 250 quid, and then an extra 5,000 on my doors so I can open them with the wave of a hand. <sighs> World's gone mad. Okay, moment of truth. So it could be expensive if Kiri wants to kit out her whole house. Should we see if it works? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> You can use implants to buy some train tickets in Sweden, and at least one company in the US has given staff the option to access the building and pay for meals using them. Yeah, some staff in some uh, companies have already been implanted in uh, the US and uh, other places around America. How uh, sinister is that? Ch chipping, chipping your employees so you know where they are and what they're doing at all times. I mean. Now, this is the worst bit coming up here. There's this poor guy who's lost all his limbs, and they're basically exploiting him to get this pro-human chip implant message across. Watch this. I can see how this kind of tech could make life that bit more convenient for most of us, but for Alex Lewis, it has completely changed his life. Four years ago, he became seriously ill and had to have both his arms and legs amputated. If I was to get out of a car, 
try and get keys out of a bag, try and get the key into the lock and try to turn it and then try and get in, it could take 10, 15 minutes. So now with the microchip and the, the, the simplicity of it all, I'm in and out within 30 seconds. So this has changed your life quite a lot then? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's been a real game changer. I travel extensively and for me, if I had my medical data stored in a microchip in my arm, if I was to fall ill abroad, rather than being presented to somebody not having a clue what's going on, for them to scan and to have that information is massive. I think there's a, there's a wealth of um, positive differences that this type of technology can make. Now, my first thought when I was watching this was, apart from, you know, this poor guy, what he's been through, um, is he's using this chip, he's saying, as a way to get into his house and also for storing medical records. Well, you could have that on a pendant around your neck. You wouldn't need that to have, a, have that as an implant on a chip inside your body. You could have your medical records um, in a pendant around your neck. And also, if you did want to have some kind of... Um, electronic door opening device you could also have that on the pendant you don't have to have that implanted in you which is you know a disgusting exploitation of this poor guy to get this message of this pro rfid human implant of chips agenda across it's just disgusting i was initially quite skeptical about all of this but meeting alex has shown me just how useful microchip implants can be maybe one day we'll all have one Maybe one day we'll all have one. Can you imagine that? What kind of world would that be if uh, babies were microchipped at birth? I mean, you know, it's the stuff of dystopian nightmares, isn't it? It's, you know, that's something we have 1984, which was meant to be a warning, not a blueprint. But that's how this kind of agenda creeps into society, isn't it? It's by convenience. You know, it's so convenient not to have to type a password into your laptop or your mobile phone. You can just hold it up and it will biometrically read your face or your thumb or fingerprint but then what is what's your phone company doing with that data they your biometric data that they've got what do they do with that you know we see all these scandals about um people's data being stolen or used if you, if everything about you is on a chip or your medical records uh, your means of travel your means of accessing medical care your means of leaving the country and our passport control i mean that would be the ultimate control wouldn't it they can either be turned off or it could you know, be hacked um, or stolen. Um, there's also obviously health implications with this. There's been uh, many studies because obviously they've chipped animals first. Animals are chipped, you know, dogs are routinely chipped. Um, and there's been uh, a lot of studies with uh, tumour, cancerous tumours in dogs uh, and cats around where these uh, RFID chips have been implanted. So there's obviously health things we need to be aware of um, um, obviously they can be hacked as well anything electronic can be hacked um, plus it's also not about the data that they transmit what data can they receive and how can that affect you you know we our brains have brain waves uh, our, um, blood cells and all our organs they communicate electronically um, we've got small electrical charges you know, synapses in the brain you know the electrical we are bioelectrical chemical beings aren't we but we are beings of frequency so what does having a chip implanted in you which could potentially be used to broadcast broadcast certain waves or certain um uh, certain electrical impulses what what would that do to you I mean, another way of control isn't it i mean it sounds completely like some kind of futuristic nightmare but it's here now on the one show on bbc's one show I mean, it was just so sinister in its banality, and it's like everyone's smiling. Oh, yeah, how cool is this? Oh, this is great. I've got a chip implanted. Seriously? 2018, this is the world we're living in. Is that the future we want for us and our kids? Not the future I want, but um, that seems to be the way, we, way we're going. But we've got to keep an eye on this kind of thing, you know? This uh, surveillance and control by convenience. It's the ultimate control, isn't it? Can you imagine someone like Donald Trump having that amount of control if, if the whole of the American population were microchipped and had everything on a microchip? He could just, in his opponents, he could just turn off their microchips, couldn't he? What do you do? You wouldn't be able to pay for anything. You wouldn't be able to get medical care. You wouldn't be able to buy food. You wouldn't be able to travel, you know? It is the ultimate control, and this is what we've got to be aware and be uh, wary of. So, yeah, I was quite shocked to see this on the one show um, but I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised because this kind of uh, 
the agenda permeates all society.